experiencing aerobatics for the first time in the airplane that we spent two years building. Nice and hard, hold that pole. Beautiful. Yeah, that felt good. That was still in my brain from when we did it together. That was nice. Just about getting that experience, getting out of your comfort zone a little bit, learning more of the complete envelope of your airplane. Awesome, man. It's exciting. Yeah, man. It's been a long time working toward this. I know. We finally got to peel off the aerobatics restricted placard and I got to do some awesome training with Luke to learn the nuances of flying aerobatics in the RV-14. Okay. Ah, that's awesome. <laughs> How yeah. good is that? That's ridiculous, man. <laughs> this one's about Luke handing me the tools so I can do this safely by myself. But now I'm really excited to say that it's your turn to start practicing on your own. Yeah. Solo aerobatics yeah. to get this stuff really, really solid. And then share it. And then share it, and that's what it's all about. Yeah. Pulling out the RV-14 today just felt different. This airplane is an awesome IFR cross-country traveling machine, but the prospect of flying aerobatics is surreal. This is, after all, largely why I chose the RV-14. Okay, so canopy is locked. Harnesses are good. Did you, do your, did you do your crotch belt on this one? Uh, yeah, you know what I call? I will do that. It's been a few years since I've flown aerobatics regularly, so it was really awesome to get Luke out here to help me transition back into that world. I'm going to keep a hand on the mixture, so I do that right before throttle. Charlie Golf Alpha Terrence, left turn eastbound, not above 2,500 feet in the zone, wind 1310, gust 16 from Alpha, clear takeoff, runway 12. Clear okay, takeoff 12 for the left turn out, not above 2,500 in the zone, Charlie Golf Alpha. Mixture rich, and there we go. A three and a half mile final, do you have insight? Insight. Power set. Blue meter for my character. Temperature pressures are good. That's addictive. T meter off. In the previous episode, Luke took the airplane solo and ran it through all the aerobatic maneuvers that it was capable of, looking for any sort of tendencies and nuances. And this episode is about him getting me familiarized. Okay, so what's, what do you think the acro checklist for this thing should be? Make sure everything is secure, your belt is properly done up, and... Yep, harnesses. We don't need to think about fuel pump or anything else. Nope. We'll just make sure our power is set. Nothing at the back, the extinguisher is latched. We'll check that in the lock round. Check it again. Yeah, good idea. You don't want that clock. Ooh, I can speak from experience. That's no fun. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Bob Hoover has a story about being gifted a bottle of whiskey from someone that thought it would be fun to just stick it into a seat pouch and not tell him. And of course, that did go well. We did some aerobatics. Oh. Okay, temps look about right. Oh yeah, fun switch. Yeah. That yeah. gives me the light. Yep. Okay, so here we are at 5,000. So for the spin, it's just power off. Uh, let's not do a spin right away. We'll leave that just until we put a, get a bit of G on. And okay. But the yeah, you just start with a aileron roll. Oh man, that's ridiculous. Yeah, man. Yeah, pitch up, you know, 20 degrees and just take your time. So it's full, go to 20, huh? Yeah. Nice so right about there. Oh, higher, 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 yeah, higher. right there, that's 20. Kind of had rudder on the whole time. So what's the best way to do that with rudder again? So that was like maybe 10 degrees nose up. Oh, was it? Because I, I was looking at my... Don't look there. You, you need to... It's, it's not good for this. You need to be out, out there. Okay. Visual flying. All right, all right. Yeah, make sure you pull up wings. Right level. about there. Yep. And don't push. Yeah, don't push. So I felt it almost, it did go negative, but it went a little bit less than 1G. Yeah, you don't you don't need any forward stick during the roll. Just a ballistic roll, you don't need any. Actually, show me one then, and I yeah. just want to see what it's supposed to feel like. I've got control. Uh, loss of speed. And we'll pitch up a little more vigorously, wings level, unload the stick, left rudder. I'm going to remove the rudder, and I'm going to finish with just a touch of left rudder. Wings level, and then ease on out. Yeah, okay. So that wasn't too bad. No, not at all. Okay, cool, man. You got control. Yep, so one more. Try it again if you like. Easing out of the rudder. A little bit. A little bit more rudder now. Look at that. Right on head. Yeah, sweet. Why don't we do a wing over? Okay. We'll, we'll end up on the opposite heading. So what's the right technique for a wing over? Show me what you what that's yeah, supposed I'll to show be you like. Look. Lots of speed so we can have a nice climb element here. So we'll pitch up and then introduce some roll while we're pulling out. Now we're looking into the maneuver. Now we're halfway through. Now we're going to let the nose just come down gently, relax the stick, looking to where we want to recover. 
Roll out and ease out simultaneously. Max G's when the wings are level, opposite header. You could do that with the passengers. I think you're the greatest pilot in the world. Like it's, you yeah. take advantage of all this yeah. visibility. It's just awesome. And it's such an easy, low-key so, maneuver. Exactly. Okay, so now that we're heading this way, we'll do a loop? Yeah, uh, so I'd go 24 inches. Let's do this one at at least 150 knots, just to get the feel of that little more envelope. So we're looking forward until the vertical, then we look to the side, then we look at the horizon. Yeah, yeah, so look forward just to make sure the nose is tracking straight at the initial pull. Once you lose everything out of you, then shift your eyes left. Okay. And then over there at the top, and then finish forward. Okay, so we'll get her to 150 at 24 inches. Yeah. So just start it from basically level flight at 150. Yes, sir. Wow, that's crazy. So 3G pull? Yep. Touch your right rudder. On our key point, beautiful, looking perfect. And then as you gain speed, just reapply that 3G pull right to the finish. And I was pulling back the throttle instinctively, but I didn't need to do that, right? Didn't need to do it. Okay. Ah, awesome. <laughs> How yeah. good is that? That's ridiculous, man. <laughs> the training stuck with me. I haven't done this stuff since we flew, like however long ago that was. Uh, it's all you, I mean, it's right there. That's awesome, man. You, you can get a little, you you want to be a little light at the right. top. All right. We were probably, what, 80 or something there? I don't even know, I wasn't looking. Yeah, you don't really need to worry about the speed so much. I mean, angle of attack, right? You're flying the wing up there. Yeah. Uh, so I'll pull up here. There's a wing over, I'll show you what I mean here. I'll get the airplane, but we'll hold the stall speed. And I'm just, like, look at the angle of attack. Yeah. Like, I didn't stall. Right. Just relax the stick. Let it fly over. Yeah. Not asking more of the wing than what it can give me. Right. So we're at, like, 7,000. Do you want, you want to go down a little bit or do something? Well, why don't we do a spin? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so why don't we do, just to get warmed up, we'll do a one-and-a-half rotation with left foot to enter. Yep. Standard spin entry, standard exit. We'll do a little, maybe do a hazel and make sure we're all secure. Yeah, so there's that backfiring. So that's... Yeah, it just does That's that. That's what it does. Okay, push to maintain altitude. Keep pulling back, back, back. Okay, now enter. Full rudder, full back, hold it. No aileron. Recover. Stick forward. More stick forward, eh? Yeah. Yeah, so just make sure you're not a aileroning at all in the... Do I was? Because I didn't I think, think it yeah, was. I think you had a little bit of left at the entry there. Okay. It, it got a little more accel you know, accelerated than uh, the initial wing drop. Then. She spins pretty, uh... Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so okay. that rec don't, don't be shy in the recovery. Hard opposite rudder. I was trying to just gauge what it was going to take, but stomp on it, eh? Yep. And just pitching to maintain altitude. Try not to settle. Keep pitching back, 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 back. Okay, now, full rudder, full back, no aileron. Half. One, recover. Yeah, I'm fighting it, it's hard, eh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I had to push harder than I've ever experienced. Like in a 172, I've never had it, like, whoa! 172 is not a real spinning airplane. This is a real spinning airplane. Okay, so... So that's auto-rotation that you just experienced. Which, when it, when it was like hard to it's, push? It's, yeah, it's like self self-sustaining. Yeah. Yeah, uh, 172 does not do that. It just it just rotates. A lot of pilots that I that I fly with, their spin experience is usually limited to what they did in their initial training, which quite often was in a Cessna 152, 172, something like that. It's not a full, robust understanding of what a spin can be, because I know the flight training manuals talks about this thing called auto rotation, but the thing is in in a training environment. Uh, the airplane is so forward loaded that you, it never really experiences true auto rotation. You could let go of the controls and the airplane is going to recover just about instantaneously. That is not the case with your airplane there. That doesn't mean it's unsafe at all, it's just it has different characteristics. So in, your, in the case of your airplane, spinning it, if you would let go, it would continue to rotate on its own. It would decay eventually and fall out, but it would be at tremendous altitude loss to an unacceptable level. So how many continuous, how many did they keep going before I got it out? Because I felt like it was more than one again. Like the recovery... Well, it's hard to gauge because the recovery was not positive on it. You're, you're kind of a little hesitant, so... Okay, so just give it. Just yep, hit it. Yeah, okay, yeah. And then resist all urges to go opposite aileron. Like if you feel it rotating left, yeah. don't go right at step that. that just accelerates it. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yep. All right, so I'm getting us back to six and doing our one. Yeah, let's do a right turn in the opposite direction. That'll be our, our clearing turn. to a neighborhood. Yep. <laughs> 
Boom, 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 boom. Pop it. Power's right off. Half. One, recover. Two more, too far forward. <laughs> 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 well, I took your advice. <laughs> so there's a little nuance happening there, like because I think you were more neutral on your aileron, like you could feel it entered differently. It wasn't quite so aggressive. Right. That was a more classic spin entry. So it didn't actually require quite so much. But I mean, the moment you I mean, you can pop it forward like that, it's just not going to take as long to come out. The moment you feel that the wings are starting to. Yeah, I thought I, felt, I thought that was when I started and to pull, then, but then it was negative already. It doesn't take long. It yeah, does yeah. not take long. If you have any kind of pitching down moment as if you're building speed, you're going to come out of your seat. Yep, that's what happened. Yeah. So, yeah, up as a rudder forward comes out neutral. Yeah, it's not long if you do it aggressively. But, no, it's all part of the process, getting the feel of it. It's all fine. Coming out safely. We have to do it to the right as well. Okay. Yeah. So, should we just do that now then? Do it one to the right? I think so. But you can see how if someone just jumped into this thing, didn't know anything about spins, started to recover, they would think that something's wrong. I thought I had a problem with the elevator when it, j it felt jammed. Oh. Never, ever experienced that before in anything. Yeah. Even in the extra or the pits, I never experienced that. No, no, they where don't, it pushed they back on me. No, they don't do that. That ah, crap will pop. Okay, so spin to the right. That's how. One, recover. Did it again. Okay, but that was better. I caught it. Good catch. Yeah. Good catch. I think that was something for you to get used to is when you were doing your spin recoveries, there's, you know, just due to different factors, the airplane design, aerodynamics, what have you, you know, the stick forces were, was surprised you a little bit. I noticed on your first recovery, it's almost like you felt like there was, like a, the stick was dead, there wasn't responding. I felt like it was jammed. Like I was like, what the hell? I've never ever experienced anything yeah. pushing back on me like that. Usually in a spin, it's all dead. Everything is just floppy. In you know, initial training, that's all it takes to break a stall is just neutralize the elevator, yeah. neutralize the stick or the yoke. Well, that, that isn't enough here. You're gonna, again, consume tremendous altitude recovering that way. So you have to go all the way to stick forward and hold it for half a rotation or more before it starts to positively break out. So, yeah, there was nothing wrong at all there. It's just, it's just the way it feels that we're deeper into the stall than you're used to. Just about getting that experience, getting out of your comfort zone a little bit, learning more of the complete envelope of your airplane. Uh, we, should, uh, we should do a barrel roll. Okay, you want to show me one? I can show you one. This airplane does a beautiful barrel roll. Do you have control? I do have control. This is the one where you can have a cup in your hand and be 1G the whole time, right? If you do it right? You do it right, yeah. Let me try. I'll just hold this so I can watch the level of the water. <laughs> so it's a combination loop and rolling figure, so we're going to, you know, we have lots of speed, so we're going to turn that vertical lift. We're going to start a climb. Once we're about 45 degrees up, I'll start introducing a roll with the pitch. And then we want to use that lift to turn us all the way to 90 degrees from our starting heading. I'll do this to the left. You know, we want to be halfway, you know, on 45 degrees. And wings level inverted 90 degrees from this heading. So it's very important that we're looking in the direction of where we want to go. Okay. Here we go. Pitching up. Now we're looking towards where we want to go. That's our key point right there. Wings level inverted now. That's crazy. And then we're... Recovering to where we started from. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, you had it perfect, man. Okay, so we're gonna go straight up out to 45 pitch and then get into it? Yep. And we'll be perfectly lined up here with the section line. Halfway through is inverted on that point and then finishing right where we started. Okay. There's my pitch about 45. Okay, so this is going to get a little ugly, so I'll just yeah. help you get out of that. Because I wasn't pitched up enough? Yeah, exactly. So you're going to you're gonna speed up way too much. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so... We'll but you can see it. how easy you, you can get out of that. It was wings level. Yeah, I could tell that I was going to end up diving. So yeah. I need to continue the pitch up the whole time. The whole time. The way I like to do a barrel roll is to have that 90 degree reference off your starting heading because it's, you know, it's something that you can measure you can measure if you achieve that or not. Whereas, like, as long as you're, you know, you're looping and rolling at the same time, that's like a, in a corkscrew shape, that's technically a barrel roll. 
So in that way, it's a bit abstract. Like some of the other figures are more, you know, uh, binary, black and white. This one's a bit abstract. You really have to see where you want the airplane to go. And then it's just a matter of, you know, exactly what you would do if you were turning base to final. How do you know when and how much to turn? It's just simply looking out and assessing your closure rate, rate of turn, all that with, you know, where you're at. And, and it's the same thing in a barrel roll. You, if, you, if, you know, your nose is here and it, you need it there with your wings level inverted, well, that's just something that you just have to see and feel and react in real time. So yeah, that's, again, that's why we focused on what are you looking at. It's the stick is making like a J pattern. So think of the letter J. Yeah. You're still pulling back while you're introducing the roll. You don't want to let that go. Okay. Pitch up, 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 up. Now blend the roll. Now roll a little faster. Don't don't roll quite so fast. Yeah. Okay, but that was too fast. But <laughs> yeah. At least we didn't overspeed and we ended up where we started. That was more of the shape that we're going for. I feel like yours just lasted longer. <laughs> it did. Yeah, like I'm letting mine breathe a little more. You're, you're still compressing it a lot. This okay, is, so is, when we're inverted, I can just slow everything down. Yep, exactly. Yeah, you're too much, you're kind of pinching the middle portion. Yeah, like let me show you the, the big thing that could go bad on this one. So if I don't pull up very much, and now I'm just rolling. Oh, I got it. And now I, I don't want to go all the way through, so no. that's my nearest horizon. Get back to it. Wings level, ease out, and you can see how that manages the airspeed. Right. Uh, yeah, so I think a good way to get used to verticals are the Humpty Bumps. So yeah, let's go 150 knots. We're going to go pull the vertical. Uh, you know, three and a half G pull. We'll hit the vertical, so we have to unload the stick slightly. Otherwise, we'll fall onto our back. We'll ride that up, you know, probably five seconds. Then after that, we'll just gently float the airplane off the vertical line with slight back stick. So we're going to draw that radius up. And then we'll pull increasingly hard, hard, hard to the vertical down. We'll hold that for three seconds and then exit. Here we go. Little right there. Push, two, three, four, pull gently. A little harder now, pull harder. Keep everything straight, keep pulling. Pull, 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 right to the vertical. Push, two, three, pull. And then nice and hard, hold that pull. Beautiful. Yeah, that felt good. That was still in my brain from when we did it together. <laughs> that was nice. Awesome. That's probably one of my favorite maneuvers, man. Have to do it. So you want to do a hammer? I think so. Okay. Right. So uh, you want to see it? Or? Yeah, let's see it. Let's see what it's like in this airplane. Okay, I got it. Got it. So we'll point away from the sun. We'll be looking left. In terms of how long you ride it up, it's going to be a little longer than we did for the Humpty, of course. We want to be in you know, if anything feels funky or weird or you, you don't know what's going on, you just hump the out of it. Okay. That's the safest way out of this. Okay, so speed check is good. Ready? Yep. Right foot, we're looking left, we'll set the vertical. Two, three, four. And rudder. And then opposite. Two, three, exit. Increase the pull. Make the level. You want to try that? Yeah. Get the tool. I'll, I'll bring it back out there and do it. Yep. Um, uh, well, we go this way just again, so we're not looking up the sun. Yeah. So are we good for 6600 start here? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Get a right foot. Look at the lamp. Keep pulling, pulling, pulling. Stop. Two, three, four, and left rudder. Push the stick a bit and just wait for it. Right stick, opposite rudder, hold the line. Yeah, I didn't really hold that line. And exit. So this is where not having a good amount of reach on the pedal affected me. I don't think I had full rudder on that. Yeah, that's, an, that's an issue. I had to kind of reach too on mine. I could, I could be a little close to the pedals. The ground adjustable pedals and seats are sort of set for a compromised position between Dave and I. So the long-term plan is that for aerobatics, I'll have a parachute that'll get me that little bit closer for easy full pedal reach when I get light in the seat. Okay, um, I mean, I don't know. I feel like we covered pretty much everything. You want to head back? Yeah, I mean, loop, sail, on roll, spins, hammerhead. We've done it all. And the rest of it is just combinations. I mean, there's Cubans and implements and split ass. I mean, yeah. obviously a split ass is it's an energy, you know, pig. Like you're going to lose altitude, gain speed. So you have to be really slow for a split ass. So let's, if we get time for another flight, let's do some of that stuff. Yeah. 
And between Luke flying all the other airplanes at the museum, we did find time to get me up for another flight to refine some of those maneuvers. Um, let's do another wing over just so I can remember still how to do that. Yeah. So it's, it's basically the same. Yeah, just, just resist the urge to roll all the way. We're just not resisting all, yeah, we're not rolling all the way. Yeah. Yeah, glance into it. And then just start coming out of it here. Because I want to be going that way, right? No. I want to go that way? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> as soon as I locked into that road, I'm like, that's the one. <laughs> nope. So I'll do this again. That's my road at 55. Good climb. Yeah, good bank angle. Yeah, nice and slow, good. That's how, coming out here. Yeah. Okay, that's my road yeah, right there. Yeah, that's it. Beautiful. Okay, yeah, I got it. And yeah, you can make that as big or as small as you like. All right, here we go. Yep. Wings level, pull, get the wings, stay there. Keep pulling, go, keep going, keep going, and right there. Two, three, four, kick. Little right stick, and opposite rudder. Oh, so there's a spin. <laughs> so you, you could have fought that, you had that. And a slight unloading, like you could feel that the AOA was high. Yeah. That's just because you had too much back stick. If the stick, if the elevator is totally neutral, you cannot stall. Right. You won't have airspeed, but you will not stall. Right. Okay. So that was all. You had just a tiny bit of unload. Yep. Yeah. You can see, you can see how field plays a role. But you can feel the air is starting to detach a little bit. You can just whoop, reattach. Yep. Okay, maybe I'll just try one more of those, and yeah. I'm good to go back, if you're good to go back. Yeah, man, yeah, you're, you're doing good. As you're coming through the pivot, you know, don't don't be afraid to really fight it to, to prevent it from rolling. And you're at really low speed there, so you need a full reflection sometimes, so. Okay, okay, here we go. Good vertical. Three, four, kick. Little right stick, good. Stay with it. Stay with it. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, that was better. A little wobbly, but I was on board. And a little more pull here, a little more pull. Yeah, that'll help control the speed. Good. Okay. Ah, very nice. Nice. Oh, well, since we're so high, I guess we should do a spin to get down. That was good. And to keep things interesting, we made this one a five rotation spin before I started the recovery. And pretty good job capturing the track log for the Garmin panel. And this is Cloud Ahoy, of course, debriefing it. Recover. Centralize and pull out. Great. I'm, my head is still spinning after that. How many rotations was it when I started the recover? Like I felt like it was still two. Oh, how I many did it really take to stop? Yeah. Oh, no, it was coming out. Cool. Whee! Yeah, that's that's like your your vestibular keeps on spinning. <laughs> yeah. So after a few hours tossing the RV-14 around with Luke, I feel confident to start building up my chops for solo aerobatics and then introducing friends and family to the world of flying upside down. Next up in this series, Luke will be flying the museum airplanes. And until then, keep your flight chops sharp. At Harvard Aerobatics and then this, what a difference in like pressures required and deflections. <laughs> it's full body. It's, it's yeah. a lot, yeah, a lot of movement. <laughs> yeah. You owed me this one? Yeah.